Centripetal Acceleration A second hand on a stopwatch moves around with uniform circular motion. If we calculate the average acceleration of the second hand as it moves between 15 seconds and 30 seconds, we find that the acceleration is directed 45 degrees up from left. This is the same direction as the instantaneous acceleration of the second hand halfway in between at 22 and a half seconds. In fact, the instantaneous acceleration of the second hand at all times in its motion is directed toward the center of the circle that the second hand is traveling around. The word centripetal means directed towards the center, so we call this acceleration centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is characteristic of uniform circular motion, meaning that an object in uniform circular motion undergoes centripetal acceleration. For centripetal acceleration in uniform circular motion, the magnitude of the acceleration stays the same, but the direction constantly changes. Since the direction of the acceleration constantly changes, that means the acceleration vector is not constant for centripetal acceleration. We know that the direction of the centripetal acceleration of an object in uniform circular motion is always toward the center of the circle, but how do we calculate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration? We'll derive an expression for it. As the second hand on our clock moves from point A at time T1 to point B at time T2, it sweeps out an angle that we will call theta. We'll call the point at the center of our motion point C. V1 is the velocity of our second hand at time T1, and V2 is the velocity of our second hand at time T2. We can see how much the direction of the velocity changes from time 1 to time 2 by measuring the angle between the velocity vectors. We'll call this angle gamma, and we'll call this angle between our line CA and our velocity vector V2 the angle phi. Now, since the line CA is perpendicular to our velocity vector V1, the angles phi and gamma add up to 90 degrees. Also, since the line CB is perpendicular to our velocity vector V2, the angles theta and phi add up to 90 degrees. If phi plus gamma equals 90 degrees and phi plus theta equals 90 degrees, the angle theta must be equal to the angle gamma. From time 1 to time 2, the second hand sweeps out an arc of length d. d is the distance traveled by the end of the second hand. Distance is equal to speed multiplied by elapsed time, so we will call the length of this arc v delta d. When we calculate the instantaneous acceleration of the end of the second hand, we are doing so at one instant in time, meaning that the elapsed time over which we are calculating it is approaching zero. As delta t approaches zero, the points a and b get closer together, the angle theta also approaches zero, and the arc v delta t approaches a straight line. So, we will now treat triangle ABC as an isosceles triangle with V delta T as the base, and we will call the length of the second hand R. With our velocity vectors end to end in this way, they also form an isosceles triangle with delta V, the magnitude of the change in the velocity, as the base of the triangle. Because these are both isosceles triangles, and the angle theta is equal to the angle gamma, these two triangles are similar triangles. That means that the length ratios that exist for one of these triangles apply to the other triangle as well. Let's say that the magnitude of our velocities v1 and v2 is equal to v. With our similar triangles then, that means the ratio delta v over v 
is equal to the ratio V delta T over R. Rearranging, we get delta V over delta T equals V squared over R. Delta V over delta T is an equation for magnitude of acceleration, so that means that we have found our expression for the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration equals V squared over R. So the centripetal acceleration of an object moving in uniform circular motion is always directed toward the center of the circle of motion, and it has a magnitude of v squared over r, where v is the speed of the object and r is the distance from the object to the center of the circle of motion.